Friends subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get notifications of my latest video updates. Hello friends, today I am going to tell you about the top 10 unfinished paintings existing in the world. Before starting the video I want to tell you a small tip which is very useful. Turn on your auto-generated English captions in the bottom right corner, it's because the words which we see on screen would be more remembered than which we hear. Let's get started. At number 10 comes the Adoration of the Magi, which was painted by Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci was famous for his great paintings, there was a great saying that quality takes time similarly Leonardo was slow to finish his work. As he has a vast array of talents which kept sidetracking him into other fields such as engineering, science, and mathematics. At the time of 1481, Da Vinci had been commissioned by Augustinian monks to paint the Adoration of the Magi, the painting repressing the three wise men's arrival to meet Jesus. Within a year, Da Vinci had created an initial life-size draft, which was over 2.1 meters that is 7 feet squared and portrayed the underpaint tones. In 1482, he left to win favor with the wealthy future Duke of Milan, Ludovico I. El Moro. It was worth the gamble, as it was in Milan that he was commissioned to paint the Last Supper. Da Vinci completed only six paintings in the 17 years he was in Milan, and the Adoration of the Magi was recommissioned and repainted by Filippino Lippi. Today you can find these paintings at Uffizi Gallery in Florence. At number 9 comes the Treaty of Paris, painted by Benjamin West. By the end of the American Revolution, all parties involved were understandably looking for the best terms of agreement, so a U.S. delegation including John Adams and Benjamin Franklin headed to Paris to begin talks with the French, Spanish, Dutch, and British in 1783. The talks were a huge success for the Americans, as they validated the independence of the original 13 states as well as fishing rights and the release of prisoners of war by the British. To celebrate, famed historical artist Benjamin West was appointed to paint a picture depicting the occasion. There was just one hitch, the British delegates refused to be painted, as they felt their defeat was shameful. As a result, the picture has a gaping blank space where they would have been. Unfortunately, throwing their toys out of the pram didn't work, and the half-finished painting still exists in the library at Adams National Historical Park in Massachusetts. At number 8 comes the Victory Boogie Woogie, painted by Piet Mondrian. Dutch artist Piet Mondrian's abstract works are known throughout the world for the way that they convey city layouts in the most basic elemental colors and shapes. Reflecting the musical influences and energy of New York, Victory Boogie Woogie was never finished due to Mondrian's unfortunate death from pneumonia in 1944. Looking closely at the picture, we can see that the bolder, simpler lines have been replaced with smaller, more vibrant squares of sticky tape as the painting developed. Alongside the musical influences, the name Victory Boogie Woogie also represents Mondrian's enthusiasm and belief that the U.S. and the Allies would help win World War II. At number 7 comes the James Hunter Black Draft Tea, painted by Alice Neal. American portrait artist Alice Neal's oil painting James Hunter Black Draft Tea is a great example of how a painting can be finished yet incomplete. Despite not finishing the work physically, Neil decided that its incomplete nature actually conveyed the emotions she wanted, so she put her signature on it and displayed it in the Whitney Museum. The story behind why the painting is incomplete is a poignant one. Unappreciated for most of her career, Neil would often invite strangers to sit for a portrait. In 1965, she invited James Hunter, who had just found out that he had been drafted for service in the Vietnam War. The first sitting captured his melancholy and contemplative look. Neil finished most of his face and drew the outline of the rest of his body. Hunter never turned up for the second sitting. Mysteriously, his name never appeared on the list of soldiers at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, so we can assume that unless he used a pseudonym, he didn't die in Vietnam. However, his whereabouts remain unknown to this day. At number 6 comes the Madonna with the long neck painted by Parmigianino. Girolamo Francesco Maria Mazzola, also known as Parmigianino due to his birth in Parma, 
was an Italian Renaissance painter who painted in the mannerism style of exaggerated and elongated proportions to suggest beauty and grace. Commissioned to paint a picture of Mary and Jesus for a funeral chapel, Parmigianino spent several years tinkering on Madonna with the long neck before dying of a fever in 1540. A renowned perfectionist, Parmigianino is perhaps a classic example of not knowing when to stop. Despite several drafts and stagings, he never quite achieved what he wanted, and the tampering has led to several noticeably incomplete areas. Not only are the column and sky unfinished, but the figure of Saint Jerome in the bottom right corner has a floating foot next to him. At number 5 comes the portrait of George Washington, painted by Gilbert Stuart. One of the most regarded portrait artists of his day, Gilbert Stuart painted over 1,000 people, including U.S. presidents and kings and queens across Europe. His most famous artwork, however, is a deliberately incomplete painting of George Washington. After Stuart's initial painting of George Washington in 1795 was a success, George's wife Martha asked Stuart to create another picture of him in 1796. Stuart did not finish the second portrait and instead stopped after painting the face and part of the background. He used this likeness to replicate dozens of copies that sold for $100 each. It is this image that is used on the $1 bill. Allegedly, Washington was a difficult person to paint. Stuart initially found it difficult to generate the likeness he wanted due to Washington's reserved nature. Also, Washington's new dentures caused his jawline to protrude, distorting his face not surprising since they were made up of metal, ivory, and cow and human teeth. At number 4 comes the Oscar the Interrupted Portrait, painted by Natalie Holland. It is also known as the Blade Runner, Oscar Pistorius was seen as a hero to many, as he defied his disabilities, having been born without a fibula bone in both legs, he had won six gold medals at the Paralympics. Such was his dominance compared to the other Paralympians that he even competed in the 400 meters at the 2012 Summer Olympics the first double leg amputee to do so. To celebrate the event, Russian-born artist Natalie Holland was commissioned to paint several portraits of Pistorius. It is the third portrait, the one in which she desired to show him in victory, that remains unfinished. After Holland had completed his face and arms, news spread that Pistorius had shot and killed his girlfriend, Riva Steenkamp unable to bring herself to complete the picture, it remains frozen in time. Oscar Pistorius was originally charged with culpable homicide, but on appeal, he was convicted of murder and given a sentence of six years. At number three comes the unfinished portrait, painted by Elizabeth Shaumatoff. Elizabeth Shaumatoff didn't want to paint Franklin D. Roosevelt at first. It was something that she neither wished for nor planned, but by doing so, she managed to become a small part of history. Not happy with her first attempt at painting Roosevelt in 1943, Shaumatoff came back for another try to capture his energy and dynamism toward the end of World War II. She had heard that Roosevelt was in ill health, but he insisted on being painted. He was in good spirits during the week, mimicking Winston Churchill and commenting that he believed Joseph Stalin had poisoned his wife. Unfortunately, while Shaumatov was painting, Roosevelt complained of a headache and then slumped forward, unconscious. He had suffered a stroke and died later that day. In the room at the time with Shaumatov was Lucy Mercer Rutherford, FDR's former mistress, who had arranged the commission. Shaumatov did complete a nearly identical replica of Roosevelt. Selling a photograph of the original to the New York Daily News for $25,000, she later donated the incomplete work to the Little White House. At number two comes the entombment, painted by Michelangelo. The entombment is an unfinished piece depicting Jesus's body being placed inside his tomb after the crucifixion. The painting is shrouded in mystery. There is no signature on the piece, several figures are missing, and the painting itself was lost for centuries. Part of the evidence that suggests this work is Michelangelo's is that he was commissioned by the St. Agostino Church in Rome to paint a panel for their altar but later sent back the money he was given. Unfortunately, there is no record of what the church asked him to paint, nor does Michelangelo refer to this painting in any notes. 
Why did Michelangelo leave an unfinished piece? This question erased in everyone's mind, it is certain that he left Rome for Florence around the time that the painting was abandoned. One story that has endured is that his friends managed to obtain a large piece of marble from the cathedral in Florence. He was then commissioned by them to create a sculpture the statue of David. The entombment slipped into obscurity until 1846, when Scottish photographer and painter Robert McPherson was looking through a job lot of paintings intended to be destroyed. The wood from the entombment was going to be used to make a table until McPherson bought it for one pound. In 1868, he sold it to the National Gallery for £2,000. At number one, comes the turning road painted by Paul Cezanne. The last artist on this list is Paul Cezanne, a painter whose later works often ask the question, when is a painting truly finished? Cezanne feared that a single wrong brush stroke would ruin the whole piece, so much of his work followed a less is more impressionist style. His later pieces such as Turning Road left whole sections of the canvas bare, emphasizing the paint that was left. Some believe that this was unintentional and that his poor eyesight led him to miss parts of the picture. Whatever the reason is, finished or unfinished, artwork truly is in the eye of the beholder. That all for now friends. I hope you have enjoyed this session. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't miss the chance of getting daily tech facts. Thank you. Friends subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get notifications of my latest video updates. Thank you.